Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to a special edition of Facebook Live here. Uh, we know we promised you Gary Bates, but uh, Gary's been sucked up into the vortex of, of interviews. He's been on hey Eric Metaxas. We had a little uh, feedback here. I'll of turn Facebook off, off in a here. second. Come on. The engineer is struggling. Okay, now we're on there. Um, we know we promised you Gary Bates, uh, but he's been sucked up in the world of interviews. He's been on Eric Metaxas, Fox News Live. Um, I can't tell you how many. His his door is constantly being shut. He's going all over the place. Uh, his, his voice is, is getting fragged. I would say that we're almost overwhelmed by all this, but instead I think we should say we're overjoyed by all of mm, this. Yep. That everyone in the office is, is pulling a lot of hard hours right now. We've got one week before the release of Alien Intrusion in theaters, over 700 theaters across the country. I hope you've gotten your ticket. Um, this is Dr. Jonathan Sarfati, my good friend and colleague. Um, and an Australian as well, so you're at least getting one Australian on the show. Even if Gary's not here, you're getting me instead. Oh, yeah, the substitute Aussie. Okay, that makes yep. sense. Um, we're going to try to answer questions, um, so throw the questions up on, on our screens, and we'll do our best. Uh, and until they come in, we're just going to like free flow some thoughts here. We have a lot to talk about. Um, man, we, we just started around ideas before what we might discuss, like original life, uh, the Fermi paradox. Uh, the impossibility of, of alien space travel. I know you probably guys have, have seen Star Wars and probably Star Trek, all these blockbuster movies. So now there's a chance to see some science facts instead of the science fiction. Yes. So give me a science fact. Well, for instance, uh, the amount of energy required to even go up to a third of the speed of light would be more than all the uh, nuclear bombs in the entire world's arsenal. Just to, to get a small craft up to that speed, then you've got to do the same to stop it at that speed. And then you've got the problem of trying to accelerate slowly enough that they're not going to be squashed by G-forces uh, in both in both starting and stopping their journey and even turning. You know what it's like when you try and lurch in a, car. Uh, in a car when it's going at, at that speed but going at the sort of spacecraft speed you, you'd have to have a, a, such a shallow circle that it's more like um the outer planet's orbit in fact for several a lot, several times more than neptune's orbit that's how you could not turn inside our solar system so at in that other speed. words go in a straight line or die pretty much oh well, wait a second though how do we know that alien technology isn't superior to ours well, I mean, you've got the thing is, uh, there are laws of physics, and that's the thing. You can't get around the laws of physics. And this is even before you get into relativistic physics. This is just Newtonian physics I'm talking about. Yeah, it's actually one of my favorite things to do when arguing uh, creation evolution is to actually say, no, this is what we know today right now. This is reality. This is laboratory science today. This argues against another idea. And so the space-time thing... Mm -hmm. We can appeal to future technologies like warp drives and things like that, but they're not here. And also a warp drive, okay, if you could accelerate to that speed, you've still got the problem of all the debris in space that you're colliding with at that speed. And a collision at that speed with even the grain of dust would be like a pinpoint of explosion of basically a mini atomic bomb. So the uh, the dune scenario when the, the, the those creatures are inhaling the spice and thinking into, into the future so they can plot their spacecraft through the mm. heavens is actually kind of ridiculous. You know, how would you get around all the dust grains in the in the universe, let alone asteroids? It's the dust ground, grains, and there's so many. Space is quite dirty, unfortunately. Yeah. Even a single hydrogen atom at relativistic speeds would incinerate your spacecraft. So, Certainly a snowflake would. And you look yeah. at the uh, the way that spacecrafts <clears throat> look, even our ones going at about one ten thousandth of that sort of spacecrafts uh, of alien speeds, uh, the amount of damage of just a little grain of dust is enormous. So when you multiply the speed by 10,000, you actually square that for the amount of energy. So 100 million times more energy is involved. Excellent. Okay, we got a question. Oh, from, good. Great, great. Question from Amy. Good morning. Is there evidence of aliens in scripture? Go ahead. Well, my answer is um, no. We are the centerpiece of God's creation. Humanity is, has a very special place. In fact, if you look at the big picture, it appears that the entire universe was created with one specific purpose, and that is to bring about the bride of Christ. That's humanity. Um, if there is 
if there are aliens out there that that raises some um, scriptural problems like um, uh, are they in sin are they in the universe that's cursed by the curse that that got applied to the universe after Adam sinned the human here on earth and if they're living in this cursed universe do they have hope of salvation um, how could they hey here's one of my, my biggest paradoxes let's just as a as a thought experiment say there is an alien race out there um, they're not sinful. They were created in perfection just like Adam was, and they're they're living in this idyllic paradise. What would happen if we met them? Well, we would pollute them. We'd destroy them because our sinful nature, we run into some perfect alien, and we're going to become Satan to some other race, which makes no sense. And another thing is these perfect aliens would still be living in a fallen cosmos because Adam's sin had cosmic effects. You yeah. go to Romans 8 Absol and the whole clear. creation was cursed. So the Vulcan and Klingon home worlds were cursed. Coruscant was cursed. You get the idea. Uh, Adam's sin, according to Romans 8, affected everything, including these um, hypothetical alien worlds if they existed. So that's a reason why we think they couldn't exist. So points. Scripturally, there should not be intelligent life in outer space because of this whole redemption, uh, restoration, fall thing. It, it, it's too muddled theologically. Uh, second, um, the Bible does not talk about it, but it also kind of excludes it from the way it, it phrases things. Um, and third, we've got... I don't know. What, all the things we just said. We, we've written about this. Well, okay. Then also, you see, uh, think of the atonement you have uh, god the second person of the trinity took on human nature added to his divine nature so he could live a perfect human life and die for human sin he didn't take <clears throat> on vulcan nature to die for spock's sin yeah now there's um you know the possibility that you know okay we're getting real theoretical real out there but you know maybe god created different worlds and has a different redemption scenario for each different world but that's irrelevant because we could never connect with that other world. As far as we know, we're it. That's what the Bible indicates. And we have dominion over the whole rest of creation too. So yes. uh, how could you have more advanced aliens? Wouldn't that destroy the dominion mandate ah, that God good. has given to us? Excellent. Because our dominion clearly expands outside of the gravitational field of the earth. Because we have been now, we've spent a spacecraft past Pluto. We have spacecrafts that have now exited the solar system, and if Christ delays his return, given enough time, we're probably going to explore to another star. I can see it happening. It would be a long time from now at current speeds, but current speeds. why not? Um, but yeah, send something the out there. Let the next generation get the pictures back. I mean, that, that's yeah, fine. No. I'm actually, I'm actually looking forward to space exploration in the future. There's some really, really neat stuff happening right now. But, nice if we could resume the uh, manned space program. It hasn't happened for 40 plus years, has it? No, but we'll get back there. We'll get back there. We will. You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be the first man on Mars. That oh. was my goal in fifth grade, but technology. And that's why you're wearing the red shirt, is it? Oh, yeah. Well, no, not really. Any more questions? Yeah, there's one here. Let's see. Um, how uh, Joel writes, basically, uh, how would one know what alien life is when you see it? Is it a question of how we define life? Is it bacteria living? Can bacteria be on other planets, but not higher life forms? Um, I assume alien intrusion is assuming intelligent life, not just life in general. I can't even see the question anymore. Something's wrong with our, our Facebook page. It seems to be deleting stuff. Um, I think you have to click on the... No, it's, it's deleting stuff. It's, it's Facebook is playing silly uh, again with things. Well, technology, oh, we man. Technology. It yes. just kills us, doesn't it? All yeah. right, so my answer here. Yes. Um, I am talking about intelligent life. I'm talking about morally culpable, morally accountable life on other planets. Scripturally should not be true, but that does not say that God did not create bacteria, grass, even cows on other planets. Now, I don't think that's true, but scripturally I can't say it's not true because it's just it, it's not there. Um, also, though, uh, our solar system is um, is connected. As the Earth flies through space, we're actually leaving a trail of water vapor behind us. Um, and meteorite impacts have the possibility of ejecting bacteria and things out into, out of, out of Earth's gravity well. So if we find life on Mars, you know what? It's going to be a clostridium that came here from Earth. It's going to be uh, a bacterial fungal spore or, or something like that that 
I mean, how's it going to live on Mars? How's it going to get there? I and mean, the par- probability is really remote. Yeah, and but it's not zero. Exactly. And also, I think there's a problem that uh, bacteria wouldn't survive on a meteorite because of the um, burning up in the atmosphere. And that was coming to Earth. Them. Going yes. back to Mars might be a little different because yeah, there's less, less atmosphere. Exactly, yes. But point is, um, when we say no life on other planets, we're really saying no intelligent life on other planets because we don't know if God created life on other planets. I don't think so. But I don't know. But then we got the uh, Fermi paradox uh, oh, yeah. as well. That means That's the intelligent where, life argument. Yeah, uh, where are they? Because surely we would have seen them if they're actually advanced civilizations colonizing. First one reaches space travel, colonizes a planet, and those two colonize further planets. And, and then then those, those two, and yeah, yeah, geometric progression like that, you're going to get the entire universe brimming elbow to elbow with alien technologies already. But, but where are they? That's the question. That's yeah. what Fermi asked. Where are these other aliens? We're not seeing. We should be seeing them if they existed. Yes, and we're not. We end. Turning back to the alien question that we deal with in the movie, we should not be seeing or interacting with hiding aliens, who are secretly abducting people and tormenting them and and things like that. We should be seeing, you know, spaceships landing in Central Park, and that is not happening. It has not happened. All of the. Um, the, the UFO sightings, all of the, the alien abductions, um, there's nothing actually physically tangible we can put our hands on to indicate, like it, like in the um, uh, some of the Avenger movies, you know, they're collecting um, the, the Spider-Man, there. they're collecting parts of spaceships and things mm-hmm. from, from this big war that we had. Well, we actually, that's just science fiction. Yes. We don't have it. And appealing to Roswell, appealing to alien autopsy, appealing to a lot of the things that that people try to suggest that are real. In a scientific setting, in a court of law, those things actually are not admissible as evidence. They're not hard proof. Mm. Well, you think the alien would go to the White House. Why would he bother to someone who's uh, an ordinary worker uh, in some sort of country town yeah want to yeah. go to the white house want to go to the kremlin yeah, they, go the to un the at least um, yeah they're if they're have superior technology certainly they'd be listening to our communications they're gonna know who the boss is you think so wouldn't you yeah why appear at you know a, a soccer mom in her bedroom when she's 35 years old in, in a little country town that that doesn't make any sense. And why not shut us down? Because we're actually exposing them. Oh, yes. That's a good one. Well, maybe they are trying to shut us down. Oh, my goodness. But that means they're impotent. So that means that they're not here. Which means okay. they're, not all, they're not very super super scientifically advanced because they could shut us down if they were, but couldn't they? Yes, they certainly could. Um, by the way, um, Dr. Sarfati and I, um, we love uh, interacting like this. We tend to get a little sarcastic, so we're trying to tone it down a little bit. But man, we could talk back and forth for hours, and it's one of our favorite thing to do. So I hope you're enjoying it. Um, let's see if we got any more questions. Nicholas so we Peterson, can... maybe. Uh, yeah, if you see it, read it. Okay. Uh, people often won't believe these physics limitations you guys just laid out on two arguments: relativistic physics overthrew Newtonian physics um, because unreal science, sci-fi technologies have conditioned us to accept unrealistic things. Well, I mean, I pointed out that even before you get to relativistic speeds, which is close to the speed of light, you've got problems just with Newtonian physics explaining things like G-forces and the energy requirements and the energy that a tiny dust grain would have hitting a non-relativistic um, craft at, say, a third of the speed of light. So forget relativity for that. Okay. Um, is, it, is it possible that just like uh, Einsteinian physics trump Newtonian physics. Mm-hmm. Could we trump Einsteinian physics and, and realize that everything else we thought about Newton and Einstein was wrong and this mm. other thing is true and therefore we can have hyperspace and we can have faster than light travel well, I mean, and things like that. Okay, see, Einsteinian physics didn't trump so much as extended Newtonian Boom. physics, you see, exactly. because New- exactly. Einsteinian physics reduces to Newtonian physics as you get away from the, uh, from the speed of light. Uh, right. All the occasions reduced to Newtonian physics. Same with quantum mechanics. As you get to higher and higher quantum numbers, that reduces to classical physics. Boom. So, in order to appeal to some future development technology or, or physics or science, you would actually have, actually have to reject what we know today to be true. Instead of building on it, which, which science tends to do, you'd actually have to do a wholesale rejection and throw away you know, the force of gravity, gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, 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 the amount of, 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 of energy needed to accelerate this object through space, gone. 
Which, that's yeah. really sounds like magic. And you also might want to look at our article uh, called Einstein's Heroes on the website. It's interesting. Einstein's three heroes included creationist. Newton, but Boom. also Faraday, Maxwell, who are all creationists, Bible-believing yeah. creationists. And these are the people Einstein had portraits on his wall as his scientific heroes. Yeah. Actually, so my he, heroes do. I mean, well, I'm, yes. I'm studying these people and their work and what they did. I, I'm consistently amazed by how people before us thought through problems and figured things out where man i would like to have done that but i don't really think i'm that smart i'm not sure if anyone today is that smart yeah and i like newton one of the greatest greatest scientists in world history i think that's that's true a lot of scientists um, non-creation of science would agree with that too yeah. yeah so great question nick um yeah we were wrong before but not in that way there's it's it would be really hard to say that we're wrong about everything. It's it's just not quite the way it works. I mean, that's it's it's too far. It's too stretching. It's too. I mean, if that you know something like that, well, you know, maybe there's a pink unicorn standing behind me, and I just can't see it. Mm-hmm. Well, that could be true too, but that that's not. Um, it's not part of rational discourse. Right. It's not part of scientific advancement Correct. or or logical discussion. There's a Jane Underwood question, if you'd like to take that one. Do you oh, see let that? me find it. I don't see it yet. Well, I see we'll we be able to see the movie in Australia from Lausanne. Um, yes, but they have a different a different way to do it. We will post an answer to that. Um, actually, I've, I've got it, uh, actually. Um, yeah, we have it written down. Here we um, go. Okay, it's uh, an Indira Police Cinema. That's in Queensland, and that's on the 12th of February, 10, 7 p.m. So I'll put, put that uh, the details there for the Australian uh, fans. So it's just one day after the American showing, which is on the 11th. Australia will be on, on the Friday, the 12th. Yeah, we have we have to have a different um, a distribution uh, system in different countries. Uh, we, we picked Fathom Media, by the way, uh, fathommedia.com, uh, type in Alien Intrusion, you can buy your tickets through there, type in your zip code, type in the name of your town, it will find the, f- the closest location to you. I just did it yesterday. Um, it, it, it's easy to do, Fathom Events, yeah, not Fathom Media, Fathom Events, mm. Fathom Events, right, yeah. dot com. Um, we had to have a different way of doing it in different countries, so Europe's different than America, which is different than Canada, which is different than Australia. Um, that's just, just because of the way things are. Um, so you have to look up uh, different ways of doing it depending on where you where you live. But yep. this is mostly an American audience right now. Uh, you Australians should be asleep. I mean, it's probably really late. Uh, um, yeah, maybe not. It's evening. Well, not for me, it wouldn't be. It's about 20 past one in the morning. Oh, yeah, you're a night that's, owl, that's man. Not, I, for me, it's fine. Well, chess masters are all night owls, so. Oh, that's why I'm not a ch- chess master. That yeah. must be it, yeah. Yeah, you're, 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 it's really funny. Um, I share an office with, with, with Jonathan. I get here several hours before he does, and he stays several hours after I leave just because our clocks are very different. Anyway, um, a little bit of things. Now, I didn't see that question that you asked because things are flipping by me pretty quick here. Well, actually, you might say it's a, it's a an assertion. You might say, and I'll read it. It says, they are demons. Born-again Christians don't get the alien visits that others do. Aliens talk of a worldwide leader coming, but don't glorify Christ or even mention him. Yeah. Well, I think you've all, that's uh, something we do discuss uh, in the movie is a major part of the movie is this, the small minority of, of alien things, which can't be explained by natural or man-made means, where you have to say, well, what else is going on there? And they are not benevolent creatures. Whatever they are, they're not benevolent. And you're right, they don't glorify Christ. I mean, why come um, trillions of, uh, millions of light years to tell us that Jesus Christ is just one one way to God? It makes no sense, does it? No, while, while tormenting people in the most barbaric way as possible. That makes no sense from a superior alien technology uh, standpoint. It makes lots of sense scripturally from a spiritual warfare standpoint, but you have to watch the movie uh, to fill in those blanks. Uh, Amy asks, uh, will we be able to see it at Arbor Place Mall in Douglasville, Georgia? And my answer is absolutely, and I'll be there at 6 o'clock in the food court uh, before the premiere, and I'm going to probably walk in the theater about 20 minutes till because we have some previews that we made, actually, that we get to show um, and then afterwards, I'll be outside until the security guards kick us out. And the mall will probably close afterwards. They might let us be there for 10 or 15 minutes. And I will be in the Hiram uh, movie theater show where we're um, doing the same thing. And you'll see us with our lanyards. Yes, if well, you can't recognize us, thing. of course. Um, <laughs> There'll also be some of us at um, um, 
uh, Kennesaw um, on Barrett Parkway. Um, and then, but that's just because we're local, but there'll be, there'll, I know that the, um, oh, there's several creation groups around the country that are having special events, inviting their people to. So if you see a, a bunch of groupies uh, hanging around, uh, just start asking them questions and it'll pretty much be quick to identify who they are and maybe answer some more questions that you have. Anyway, um, hmm. There's a question from a Paul Price about um, abiogenesis or chemical evolution, which is life coming from non-living chemicals. But the point is, I mean, you could, if you do the calculations, you could have a whole universe filled, uh, every atom turned into a chemical evolution lab and, and grant the Big Bang timescale. The, the probability is still um, too minute to explain life from non-living chemicals. It's actually yeah. not a question of it's only limited to Earth. It's a question that's limited by chemistry in general. And and physics go, and probability and yeah yeah go to our, our web page creation.com slash origin you'll see plenty of reasons why life could not evolve from non-living chemicals on my field is chemistry the chemistry goes in the wrong direction in so Always. many different respects so it doesn't matter what planet you're talking about chemistry is against you regardless and this is that's an interesting question though because what this boils down to <clears throat> is oh well maybe something is true that we don't know yet well, that's not good science. You can't appeal to an unknown to answer a problem when what everything we know now right here today in the laboratory right here on Earth is arguing that, that original life is not going to happen. Yeah, so this is not a God of the gaps argument. This is actually an argument from what we do know uh, with well-attested laws of chemistry that I've done and I've seen in my lab myself. Yeah, actually, it's, it's a Darwin of the gaps argument. Pretty much, yes. It's, well, argument. this might be true, therefore I can appeal to it. No, you can't. You, it's, it's not a rational position to appeal to something you cannot know, but in end, everything you do know is arguing against that position. This is, so origin of life is kaput. It, it doesn't work. I mean, as a biologist, as a geneticist, you want to talk about origin of life? Yeah, let's talk about it. And I don't think you're going to win that argument. You want to talk to the chemist about the origin of life? I, I think you're going to go down in flames. There's and nothing there. It's interesting how a lot of evolutionists don't even want to talk about the origin of life. They yep. pretend it's not part of evolution, even though for decades it's been called chemical evolution. Yeah. And they need to have uh, chemical evolution to get your first self-reproducing cells so Darwinian evolution and natural selection can happen. So they need atheists need to explain chemical evolution, but sure they do. haven't got a chance. Yeah, Darwin himself tried to avoid the argument. He said, uh, origin of life, you might as well speculate about the origin of matter. <laughs> well, yeah, it's called the Big Bang. People today absolutely speculate about the origin of matter, and the you know we, we, we use the word evolution a lot to really mean naturalism, yes. which is this whole big ball of wax that goes from the Big Bang until today and everything in between. And if the evolutionists can't explain the origin of life using physics, probability, chemistry, um, that's a huge problem. That's an unbelievably huge problem. So what they try to do is say, oh no, evolution is just. Uh, uh, the changes in life. It's not about the origin of life itself, but that's an evasive argument, um, and it's actually uh, duplicitous. But yet, uh, a lot of the science fiction these days presupposes that life came from non-living chemicals on Earth, so why not on all the other planets that must be out there? But they assume, without proving, that life did begin from non-living chemicals. That yes. No evidence is asked for or given. Yeah. Well, actually, even more than that, um, Let's say that life did evolve here on Earth. Yep. Let's just say that it did, just for sake of argument for a second. Um, but we have to grant the fact that the probability of it evolving is essentially zero. I mean, it's so incredibly remote that it's almost impossible. If that's true, what if we are the only place where life evolved? Since um, it's so incredibly remotely possible, what if we're first? What if we're it? What if this is the starting point and we're the people who are going to spread her out across the universe? Well, that kind of mm. deflates the alien idea. Well, it's interesting how Richard Dawkins himself in his, his book, The Greatest Show on Earth, tried to um, use this as an argument against uh, in his favor. Well, life of, uh, is so improbable, we wouldn't expect to find it anywhere else. Oh, yes. But it, it, it's clearly evolved on Earth because we're here, aren't we? Yes. No, yeah, Richard Dawkins is not my hero, of course. Um, okay, wait, I got one from, from Ray. Wait a minute, I've read Asimov. Are you saying that traveling across the universe won't work? 
that's what we said at the start of the program, and I think Asimov knew it, uh, but I don't think Asimov actually explained the problems with trying to get enough energy even to go at sub-light speeds, like one-third of the speed of light. Uh, they mostly don't even take this into account. Yeah. Um, they might talk about inertial dampers on Star Trek, but what are they exactly? Yeah, exactly. It's more magic science fiction. It's something I've realized recently. Yeah. Um, studying uh, subatomic physics and particle physics and, and particle accelerators and uh, the development of the atomic weapons program, I realized that the reason the super collider in Switzerland is so big is because they're taking particles and accelerating <clears throat> them to nearly to, to relativistic speeds. Yes, definitely. Yep. And they got these giant magnets. Yeah. Those magnets are that big because they have to bend this charged particle at the traveling at some super velocity. Well, the mass increases when you get to that velocity. Yep. And there's a limit to how strong you can make a magnet today. So they have this, the biggest, strongest magnets possible. Yeah. In order to make a particle fly around that ring, the ring's got to be yeah, miles, in, miles in diameter. Right. Because of the forces involved in accelerating little mm. subatomic particles yes and that's just a little subatomic particle how much energy it takes to make it bend like that mm. how are you going to build a spaceship that launches people at those speeds and not you know, forget about killing the person inside just mm. the mass of the person yeah. the, the science today is arguing strongly against the idea mm. that we can travel at those speeds right and as I said, the, uh, even at uh, non-relativistic speeds, like the third of the speed of light, uh, it, you know, multiply that argument for sort of normal size things as opposed to subatomic particles. You just can't bend us that quickly without ruining everything. Subatomic particles, you, you can't, they're incompressible. Yeah. But anything composed of them can be compressed, and that's what a big problem. Yeah, big problem, because, you know, we would get squished that'd be nasty get a lot of good comments i appreciate your uh, your support everyone uh, chiming in uh, saying how you, you've read our articles and things like that I, I really appreciate that we're here for you this is why we're doing this to try to give you answers uh, to help address the culture because we got to get being involved in the culture and the culture right now is alien crazy so let's develop some ideas and thoughts that we can use to talk to the people on the street, your mother-in-law, your brother-in-law, you know, the, 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 the crazy uncle um, who needs to hear some biblical answers to the things people are using to reject the Bible. Um, here's another one. Can you comment on the Nephilim and the sons of God coming into the daughters of men and having children with them? Could this still happen today? You want to handle it? Oh, you, you could always read my Genesis commentary uh, called the Genesis account, where I have a big section on the Nephilim, the sons of God, and what they were. But the answer is no, they couldn't, because the, uh, if if you take the angels' um, interpretation, which I do and which uh, Gary Bates does, uh, I think most of us here do, um, they those people were, were punished. The Nephilim were, were destroyed in the flood. There haven't been any post-flood Nephilim, and the angels involved were locked into Tartarus in chains. That's what uh, Peter, Second Peter, and Jude say. These angels are now locked up. They can't do it again. Can, okay, Nephilim in numbers. You may say, well, what about them? Well, no, that was a lying, false report by the Israelite spies that when Joshua actually conquered the land. Yeah, 40 Nephilim, years later, where are they? They're they're not there. You can also find information in the book Alien Intrusion. Um, there's an excellent section uh, in there. You can also look up on creation.com. I believe if you go to creation.com, type in Nephilim, a um, little secret here, uh, uh, that section of the book will pop up as a PDF and you can read it. That's one of the, I, I actually, is the best summary of the subject I've ever read. It deals with all the various viewpoints historically, the reformers, pre-reformation. There's like four major viewpoints. Who are they? What are they? Um, and I, I really enjoyed that summary. I learned a lot from that that section of the book. So I encourage your listeners, go to creation.com, just Google Nephilim. I believe you'll find the answer. Great question. Uh, man, we could, we could talk about that one for a long time, but maybe we shouldn't because that we could go in circles and go really down the rabbit hole. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. It's one of the hardest okay. parts of the Bible to, to understand that one, probably. Like the rabbit hole. I, w I was in Colorado at a, at a big church meeting, and this woman came up to me afterwards, and she was talking about the secret government laboratory where they were doing alien-human hybridization genetics oh experiments. Okay. And I said, ma'am, I'm a geneticist. I had my laptop with me. I said, I've got the human genome right here on my laptop. Mm -hmm. Would you please point to me uh, the parts in the human genome that are <laughs> alien? 
And, oh man, she turned purple. She got mad at me. Oh wow. Of course, of course, it was kind of an unfair question because she's not a geneticist, but still, I mean, like I've got the data. Let's go. And then I said, all right, I don't agree with you. I turned, walk away, and she she starts following me, yelling at me, saying, oh, sure, walk away, run away, be afraid. Uh. And so I walked okay. into a group of people and I said, please save me. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. How would close you, ranks and the lady kept crazy. walking I mean, away. How would you show this is an alien DNA unless we've got aliens to give me a, a control sample? Exactly. And why would aliens have DNA? And all, yeah, especially not the same genetic code as, as life on Earth does. Certainly they haven't yeah. evolved a different genetic code from us. Yeah, and if it's in people, you know what? We would call that human DNA. So what can we do? By definition, almost, wouldn't we? Yes. All right, let's see what... Oh, boy. Yeah, someone uh, posted a picture of the dead cat that they found in, in India. Oh, boy. Um, people saying it's a dinosaur. No, it's a dead animal. Yes. Um, it could be a mongoose or a weasel. I think it looks more like a cat. <laughs> no, it's not a dead, uh, decaying dinosaur. It's no. found in a building that hadn't been opened in a couple of decades. Yes. It's a human building that we built recently, and an animal got in there and died. End of story. There's... Not a dinosaur. No way, period. All right. But it's yes. kind of fun because it's been floating around the internet for a couple of weeks, and I've actually got this question several times, people writing in. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All right. Josiah writes, Do you think there's a deception in taking people away from belief in a real heaven and hell with this deception? I imagine it's that, uh, like that with ghosts, for example. The answer is yeah. I think so. Yeah, this is a... This is, a great deception and a great way to take the focus off of God is to put the focus on aliens. And that's the thing. Why would an alien bother uh, with an earth religion to try to tell us that this one is wrong, but, uh, uh, but the new age ideas are right. Uh, it makes sense if these are actually demonic creatures who were actually opposed to Jesus, but it makes no sense if they're aliens from Alpha Centauri or further away. Why would they bother? Exactly. All right. Uh, Josiah writes in, do you think that uh, this is along the same lines as fairies, ghosts, etc.? Their deceptions is the core of these lies to take people away from believing in heaven and hell. I think we just answered yes, that. Yes, I think so. But the, the, the fairies and ghosts thing, that's really interesting. Because something I've learned about this discussion is that the stories we have of aliens today are the same stories we had about fairies in the past, right. just with a different name and a different social context. It's the same old story. But, of people yeah. being abducted, people mm. being brutalized, um, having their minds messed with. This is really ugly stuff. Well, it's interesting how these uh, the stories are adapted to the cultural beliefs of the time, aren't they? People yeah. believed in fairies, so let's pretend to be a fairy. Uh, then the Martian stuff was all the crazy. They pretend to be yeah. Martians. Now we know there's no other life. There's no life on Mars, so let's pretend to be something from another solar yeah, the system. Yeah, Zeta Reticuli or whatever. Like someone on, on our... Um, uh, Alien Intrusion Facebook page named named a particular. These people are from blank, and it's hard to pronounce the name of that place. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I mean, come on, this is not. There are so many people who believe so many different things. Right. So you have to actually line everything up, look at all the similarities in what they believe, and you realize, okay, that name's not true. This name is not true. But when it all boils down to the alien abduction, the alien interaction uh, phenomenon that people are claiming. Wait, what are, what are the salient points? They're mean. They're definitely mean. Yeah. Uh, they're invisible. Yeah. Which means they're not physical. And Jesus is not the only way to God. And, and they, they and they decry the G deity of Jesus Christ. Why would a mean thing care about the deity of Jesus Christ? If he's our alien brother flying across the universe, defying all the known laws of physics, to secretly hide here and secretly abduct people and brutalize them in the most barbaric ways possible, mm -hmm. that is not the alien story. That is the spiritual warfare story. Yeah, so they're trying to actually make themselves known to us or hide from us. Which is it? You can't have it both ways, I think. Yeah, you can't. And oh man, that the stories we hear of people that had interacted with these things over years, usually in childhood, usually in starting in childhood, usually in their bedroom at night. Mm. Um, yeah, it's really, really sad. That? People it's are in, hurting. Yeah. And so this mm. movie should be a, a good way to replace bad theological arguments arguments with better theological arguments and it means if a lot of these people just didn't know who to turn to either you see that's a sad thing because yeah. it's a such a, a horrifying uh, and unusual experiment where could they turn not even to their own uh, church fellowship and that's a sad thing but now we've, we can show where they can turn to uh, yeah and well to be fair though 
most pastors aren't equipped to deal with this. I mean, I, I didn't even know about this until maybe 10 years ago. When I first heard about it, I, I, I said literally, oh, no, a creationist has written a book about aliens. And then I found out he worked for CMI. I said, oh, no, he's one of my colleagues. And then I found out he's coming to America to become the, the head of my, of my office. I said, oh, no. <laughs> but okay. by that point, I had read his book and I had watched some of his videos. And I said, oh, this is not what I thought it was. It's not kooky, crazy, out there stuff. It's actually a biblical argument and a, an attempt to answer this phenomenon biblically. And the only answer that I can possibly see biblically is that this is spiritual in nature, not alien in nature. Well, actually, on the front page of, of our website, creation.com, in fact, there's an out there. The front page article is about pastors saying how important this movie is because now pastors will be <clears throat> equipped to deal with it. As you say, they weren't equipped before. Now they can be. So you've got some very uh, top pastors who have actually seen the movie and are telling you, yeah, this is important stuff. Yeah, we've been really pleased. Um, we sent, we sent um, a link to this movie to um, a whole bunch of different people to get their feedback. And a lot of pastors specifically, because we, we're trying to reach Christians, we're trying to reach non-Christians also, but we don't want to be this to be a big flop in the Christian community. And man, the things that they've said in return have been amazing. And that article summarizes some of that. Uh, again, this is Alien Intrusion, Thursday, January the 11th, 7 p.m., I believe in most theaters. I haven't seen that. It wasn't 7 p.m., but check your local theater. Go to fathomevents.com. Type in your zip code or the name of your town, and it'll it'll make a list below there of the closest movie theater to you. Now, so I've had a couple of times that it didn't quite work right. Try a different browser or uh, try a different zip code, uh, an, a, a neighboring zip code to the one you, you entered. It, it will work, and you will come up with um, the, the closest theater to you. Well, we're expecting a huge turnout. Uh, ticket sales have been phenomenal, especially now that the holidays are over. Ticket sales are starting to ramp up just like we had hoped. Um, you know, this is this was a huge undertaking for us. This is our third movie that we've made, but this is the first theater release movie that we've made. Um, it was a, a big risk, not just the amount of time it took us to make this, because um, it it's, it absorbed the lives of several people here uh, for for an, more than a year, but the amount of money it takes to put something into um, 700 theaters is a lot of money. So we're trusting um, that the Lord is going to uh, increase us and that he's going to bring the people out to watch it. And it's really nice to see our ticket sales uh, kicking in here. Uh, we think we're going to make it. But we're depending upon you to get out there, get to the theater, uh, bring your friends. If your friends don't want to go, then come anyway. Yes, definitely come yourself. Yeah, don't don't let your, your friends poo-pooing this uh, uh, dampen your, your enthusiasm. Yes, and if you come yourself, then you're better equipped to talk to the friends who wouldn't come. That's right. Absolutely. So come yourself. Absolutely. Um, but we're seeing a lot of um, alien enthusiasts that are going that aren't Christians. We already know that. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people who are just uh, kind of in the fringe, like, hey, uh, I, I believe in all this other stuff, but this is a new idea, so I'm going to come and watch it just because it's a new idea. This, this, this really is, has a lot of crossover potential. It's not just for the Christian community, uh, and it's a gospel issue. Uh, we are, are attempting to share the gospel with people using a very popular social trend as a platform to share that, and that's what this is about. It's not just trying to denigrate evolution or destroy kooky ideas about Zeta Reticuli. We're actually trying to talk about Jesus Christ to people who need to hear him. Anyway, we have any more questions? Those are some good ones so far. I like it. Let's see. Oh, by the way, um, you really do need to see it in the theater. Not only does it benefit us with the numbers, uh, but it's going to be a long time before it's released on DVD. Um, and I'm not sure when or if it'll appear on Netflix or Amazon. It all depends. I don't think it will. Uh, digital downloads from our site will be in the, the distant future. This is not something that um, a lot of people are like, oh, why don't you just release it for free? And well, that's not the way the world works. It took a lot of money, and our supporters get donated a tremendous amount of money yeah. uh, to produce this movie, and we would really like to try to you know break even, if not make us like, you know, so-called profit, and the profit if possible. And profit is used to, to, to spread our ministry. Yeah, the, the profit just goes right back into promoting uh, Creation Ministries International. It's not, we, we um, are not making personally anything on this movie. It's a labor of love. 
it's a I mean, I'm looking at the people walking in and out of the sound booth. Uh, all these people are involved in this. We're working really hard on this. And um, we're really excited to see it going. And now we've gone for nearly 40 minutes, which was our goal. Yep. And if there's any other questions, we'll answer them. I don't see any except the, like that, hey, we love you guys and we appreciate all those. Well, thank you for that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but the engineer has walked out and he can't push a stop button. So we're going to keep on talking until he comes back. Right. All right. So how about... um. Okay, Peanut Gallery. What have we not talked about yet? <laughs> Jonathan, what have we not talked about yet? Oh, the experiences. Well, that's why I think we've been saying that these experiences are actually very horrifying, very frightening. Um, and as I say, they had no one to talk to about it because uh, the knowledge just wasn't there to to help them. And I think there's too many people who would be dismissive of these genuine experiences, but experiences of what? And actually what's in, in the movie, what actually stopped these experiences from happening? It's a very important thing. We've got these yeah. experience, but, but how do you stop them happening? If you are what what is called an experiencer, if you have interacted with alien beings, you think, or spiritual beings, um, let just know that we are not going to insult you. We're not going to call you crazy. Uh, you might be crazy, but we're not going to call you crazy. I mean, it, 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 this is a, a, a difficult subject. It's a sensitive subject. It's something that we need to handle very carefully. Um, most people aren't equipped because you need some training here. Uh, but just come and see this movie. Um, maybe they'll be a little triggering, but we, 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 we work on this. We bring you, bring you through the subject carefully, going from step one to step two to step three. It all leads to a gospel answer to the problems that you might be experiencing. If you're not a Christian, um, I really want to encourage you to come see this. It's going to be um, a new way of looking at Christianity you probably have never seen before. Um, and again, if you are an experiencer or know an experiencer, uh, please come. We're gonna we're gonna give you some answers that you probably didn't have before. Uh, I, I I have seen people uh, come up to Gary and say, "Oh, uh, Mr. Bates, Mr. Bates, explain this to me," um, and he already knew what they were gonna say mm. because the story is always the same. <clears throat> the story is always the same. Therefore, there's there's some substance to this. There's something happening. What is happening? Come and watch the movie and find out. Oh, yes. You've got a question from Nicholas Peterson about uh, the C.S. Lewis uh, science fiction trilogy. Oh, the Perilander stuff. That's the one. Yeah, I must admit, it's not, I'm not familiar with it. I'm not sure if you are. are you? Oh, yeah, I've, I've read them. They're, oh, yeah. They're okay. They're not too bad. But I think wasn't one of the things that he said was about the, the incarnation as a unique thing for Earth, right? Oh, boy. Yeah, I read sorry. them when I was a teenager. Right, yes. So it, if you want details, I'm not going to remember. You have to look in Google. But I think uh, that's what I think, uh, one thing Lewis recognized is there is a uniqueness to the incarnation. Well, he's a, he was a Christian apologist, of course, yeah, of course, so he would say that. Which I think uh, any um, that, that is a problem for Christians with science fiction. What, what do you do with the incarnation? Because it only happened once. Yes. Jesus... Now died for our yeah. sins, rose from the dead. He sits at the right hand of God, the Father, to be our advocate uh, with him. Um, but he didn't go to Vulcan or Klingon home worlds to do yeah. the same thing. Or even Venus. Even Venus, no. Now, for those of you who don't know that word, you might not be familiar with the theology, the incarnation is talking about um, uh, Jesus Christ becoming a man to live on this earth for a while uh, with, with that eventually led to his death and crucifixion and that punishment was um in god's eyes sufficient to offer us forgiveness there's a whole there's a whole lot of theolo theology in that word incarnation because he became our kinsman redeemer he's yeah. related but to us by blood yeah uh, not related to martians very key point yeah related to humanity he became a human being um etc but we talked about life on other planets earlier mm -hmm. and yes. the theological difficulties with that earlier so rewind if you want to hear that again or just go to our website type in life on other planets in the search engine there's all sorts of cool stuff there okay um i think we're pretty much wrapping up now mm -hmm. that was a good 45 minutes we really appreciate your support one more time go to oh ah the engineer has held up a sign if you would like uh to have a cmi speaker at your church just click on our website creation.com it's pretty easy to see the events button uh, we will speak at, ooh, I forget, the number keeps changing, but it's over 300, it's much more than that, 
I, I'll type the link for you. Okay, uh, well, we'll put it in, in the feed here. Uh, we will speak at hundreds of churches in the U.S. this year, uh, well over 1,000, probably 12 or 1,300 churches around the world this oh, yes. year in one of our seven <clears throat> international offices. It's not just Jonathan and myself. Here in the U.S., we have five or six speakers. We've probably got 25 to 30 around the world. Mm -hmm. We're really busy. We are here to serve you. Our goal is to go to uh, local churches and talk to people sitting there and try to answer their questions about the Bible, about creation, about science, not just to be nerdy, but in order to encourage them that their faith is real. This is why we exist. And we'll come to your church. It's easy to do. We don't charge a set speaking fee. And in fact, that's where we we, uh, we find our most important part of our ministry is going to churches. Because so many people in churches don't realize it's a real issue yeah. until their kids um, learn evolution in high school and decide the Bible can't be trusted. And once they get leave home, uh, they leave the church as well. And you should see the, our little DVD called Fallout, very short uh, video fallout uh, and those who are still continuing in churches are those who got sound creation teaching in their church absolutely man it's, it's clear i know for myself i was really wrestling with my with my faith let's see so please remember to book your tickets if you do it earlier it actually benefits us um, just to help us track things um, it, it's, it's good feedback for us uh, stay tuned for more live stream events in the future we're going to have more especially this next week we're going to be really really busy mm -hmm. if you like this please share this the more publicity we get uh, the better we are the, the better our facebook rankings are the better our google rankings are the more people will come to see the movie <clears throat> and it all spirals into this gigantic big ball of wax called alien intrusion and there's a chance we might be able to show it at a, on a separate, an additional night. If we get the theaters crowded enough, right. they may have to show it on another night. So the encore presentations. Yes, absolutely. It happened with the movie uh, Is Genesis History. They had to show other nights. That's how popular it was. That's and right. And Dr. Carter was on that. So that's that why it was good, probably. Well, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But anyway, again, this is our third major movie, our first one in theaters. We really hope you'll come out and support us January the 11th. 7 p.m. FathomEvents.com.